Hey there gang, in this video I'm going to go over real life niche marketing. I am not talking about Google Trends. I am not talking about a Redbubble website that shows you what's trending. I'm talking about real life niche marketing. How to find things that are going to sell and using our detective skills out in the real world to do it. This is going to be a fun one. Let's go. Hey there guys, what's going on? I hope you're having a great day today and I want to talk about Redbubble real life niche marketing. Now the first one I'm going to talk about, the first strategy is using a real life friend or family member and asking them their opinion about the website. I've been guilty of this where I just think everyone thinks like me. And so I go on the Redbubble site and I know what I like. Ooh, cute cat and you know, and I go through the genre and I think, oh, well, everybody would like this one. Everybody would like that one. And then I talk to my wife or I talk to my mom and I go, hey, what do you think of this design? And they go, eh, it's all right, I guess. But I really like this other one over here. And I go, really? You like that one? Okay. Ask them why. So there's a couple ways you can do this. One, if it's somebody's birthday coming up, okay, let's say you want to buy somebody a birthday gift. Just tell them to go to Redbubble and pick something out. Say, go ahead and pick out a shirt and then see what they come back with. And then when they say, oh, here's the shirt, this is the one I want. Toe bean team, pullover shirt, cat shirt. Ask them why. Now you're not judging them. You're not saying you made a dumb decision, but you can just say, can I ask you, what was your thought process when you went through the the Redbubble site? Why did you wind up picking that one? And you might be surprised at the answer. They might come back and go, well, I really like cats. And so I typed in blah, blah, blah for their search term. And you go, holy, I never would have thought to use that search term. Or they go, yeah, I really scrolled through. And well, this one said it was a sticker and I don't really want a sticker. I want a shirt. And it's like, oh, well, you know that when you click on it, you can see a shirt underneath it. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. Well, interesting. Hmm. Oh, I really like this one, but it's in black and I really wanted red. Oh, well, you know that you can pick other colors, right? Like there's, we don't know why people are buying stuff. So ask someone to go buy something on here. You'll pay for it and see what they, see what their thought process was. I do this a lot when I go, when I have to buy Christmas gifts for people, I just ask them, can you just go to the site and just pick something out or give me your top five. It's a little bit sneaky, but I take their top five and they go, well, I really like this and I really like this. And then I just ask them why. Well, I really like this genre. I really like that genre. And then I'll buy one of the five for them for me, you know, Merry Christmas kind of thing. And they love it. They get a t-shirt out of the deal. I get some marketing research out of the deal. So that's one option. The other option is just a little more on the nose. You don't need to actually buy things for people if you don't want to, because you, know, you teach their own. But what you could do is you could just ask someone. So for example, I've got here on the page, Night Nurse. So there's 4,700 designs here for night nurse. So if you're working a night shift at a hospital, for example, this could be a genre that you're looking at. It's very specific to nurses who work night shifts. So if you know someone who's a night shift nurse, just show them this page and ask them out of all of these designs, which designs are your like top three? And, you know, again, they don't have to buy it, but they can at least take a look and they might go, oh, I really like that one. That one's really funny. Oh, that one's neat. And then you can just interview them. Just take five minutes and just go, why do you like that one? Why do you not like that one? Now, they may originally say, I don't know, which again is okay. I'm not suggesting that you, you know, tie them to a chair and waterboard them and get an answer out of them. But you can just say, okay, well, you know, which ones do you not like? Like, is there a certain type that you like better? Now, there are certain, you know, and they might just go, yeah, look, I can't be bothered. And so I'm just going to look at the first page, 4,700 results. Yeah, I'm not going past the first page. Well, if that's the case, then it's like, okay, that's, that's not super helpful information for you. But if they say out of the stuff on the first page, which one do they like? Oh, I really like this one. Oh, okay. Well, they're obviously taking advantage of the Starbucks brand, but you could certainly, you know, take a look at the way it's designed, circular design. This one, they're taking advantage of the straight out of Compton. This one's just a hashtag. This one's a play on words. This one is obviously taking advantage of Batman. Again, these bump up against trademark. They don't necessarily go over the line on trademark. Like 
This one is, I mean, look, if I was Starbucks, I'd have a problem with this one, so I wouldn't, cons I wouldn't worry about that. But here's one. I love this one. This is an old public domain image of a, of a Rosie the Riveter from World War II, and she's got a mask on. That's a great design. So if it was me, if I was a night shift nurse, and it was like, okay, you can pick one shirt, which one would you want? That's the one I would want. And I would explain why. So that's an option as well. You can interview. Now, like it doesn't have to be a night nurse. You might have a welder. You might have a plumber. You might have a lawyer, whatever it is. But you can pick somebody out there in the world that you like and respect and ask them their opinion on this. The second strategy is to just kind of be out and about. So if you're at the mall or if you're at Costco, if you're at Walmart, you can just go through the lineup. I'm not suggesting you walk right up to people and stare at them like you're a total creep, but you know, I've been out in the store and I've noticed people wearing shirts and I'm like, huh, that's kind of witty. Now they've obviously bought the shirt or they've at least someone's bought it for them and they've liked the shirt enough that they're wearing it out in public. So that's a big deal to me. Now look, there's going to be a lot of branded shirts. A lot of people are wearing Spider-Man and Batman and they're wearing, you know, NFL shirts and NHL shirts. I don't worry about any of that. I'm looking for witty sayings, witty phrases, funny, you know, offshoots. I'm using my imagination. I'm an artist. I'm not just ripping off people. I am an artist. I'm going to take ideas and apply my imagination to it. So when you're out and about in public, look at what people are wearing actually like read their shirts. So I people watch that like when I'm people watching, that's what I'm watching. I'm looking at their clothing, what's on their hats, what's on their hoodie, what's on their jogging pants, or do they have a neat backpack? They've obviously voted with their dollar. So I could ask them, you know, hey, you know, why did you buy that shirt? But they bought it. Bottom line is they bought it. So I can look at those designs and I can go, huh, maybe there's something there for me to exploit on Redbubble or TeePublic. Another one is you don't, if you don't want to go out in public, and that's fine too, we, the public comes to us. So we are on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, and lots of people share lots of funny stuff. Now, again, I'm not suggesting you just take a design. I'm not just suggesting you take this picture and you slap it on a t-shirt. That's not what I'm suggesting. But what you could do is you could certainly take the idea of something funny or the idea that someone is sharing and you can use your imagination. So here's a baby looking at a baby in a mirror and it says, ha ha, so we mean again. Well, what's to stop you from using that phrase, ha ha, so we meet again and applying a different picture to it. Maybe you take an old vintage painting where you've got two, like, like those old um, paintings that are like optical illusions where there's two sides that are the same, they're mirrored. Maybe you have like a row shark test, which is like the psychological test. It's like an ink blot, but there's the, this two sides are the same. And so one side looks like a face and the other side looks like a, say, a face. Maybe you've got two just stock images and you flip one and so it faces the other. Again, I'm just brainstorming here, but that's the idea. If I were to see this, I'd go, oh, that's interesting. You know, especially if it's liked and retweeted a bunch of times. You may want to have something where you've got a cat, a stock image of a cat, a clip art, flip it, make it look like they're looking in a mirror and then say, haha, so we meet again. So again, you're not copying the picture, but you're copying the idea of the picture. And there's a big difference between the two because look, if you go on TV or movies, for example, all the, they're all the exact same plots. Like if you look at like, there's only 20 movie plots ever. And so everyone's copying everybody. Now they've made different characters and they've made different names and locations. It's the same thing here. I'm not going to suggest you take this baby and you stick it on a t-shirt. But what I would do is I'd take, take this phrase, take a cute cat, flip it, make it look like they're looking in a mirror. That's a funny design. Something to think about. The third way you can easily get niche ideas is just by simply watching your favorite television shows or your favorite Netflix shows or watching your favorite movies. So I've just got a couple examples here that I've run through. Uh, these, these are like real life examples that, that I used or I have used in the past. So for example, uh, I watch Saturday Night Live like a lot of people do. And when people will come on the show, sometimes the host or people on Weekend Update, they will have 
trending t-shirts. You'll see this on the Tonight Show or any t interview show. Sometimes people will come on and they'll wear t-shirts that have sayings on them. And if that's the case, if, it, if I see it on a Saturday night, I will often take that idea and I will run with it on a Sunday morning because it's typically trending or at least has the potential to trend. Now again, I want to point out, I'm not suggesting you just take this exact design and you just take a picture of it and slap it on a t-shirt. I don't mean that. But the idea would be here, this comedian is talking about abortion rights and they're talking about women's rights. So the, the genre with an arrow pointed down, that would be something that I would look at and go, okay, there's people interested in this. I would at least do the research on it and go, okay, how many women's rights t-shirts are there? or coffee mugs or whatever. How many abortion rights, you know, t-shirts, you know, that sort of thing. Again, I'm not suggesting I have a political view one way or the other on it, but I saw it on TV and I go, huh, there's something there that's worth exploring. Same thing here, you know, same comedian, same show, but she's got a shirt on here that says Jim Buddy. I'm watching this and I'm just going, huh. Now, regardless of the context of the comedic sketch, I'm just looking at that going, okay, it's a text design and it's for workout clothes. Interesting. Are there other designs like that? So that just opens up a niche idea for me that maybe I would not have thought of before. So I'd go into Redbubble, I'd go into TeePublic, I type in Gym Buddy. Now look, if there's only four designs that come back, hey, I'll upload 20 or 30 to try to dominate that niche. If a thousand designs come back, then maybe I go, eh, maybe it's not worth my time. Or maybe there's a separate one. Maybe there's Yoga Buddy, Gym Buddy, Workout Buddy camping buddy, hiking buddy. See, the idea with buddy shirts is that you can buy two. So you get a two for one because, you know, especially like Christmas buddy, if you have a Christmas buddy shirt, the whole family's buying it. You can buy it like, and I've done this in the past, you upload something that I think is really rare, like hiking buddy, and then you sell six shirts all at once because the whole family's going hiking. So again, I'm not suggesting you just rip off this exact design with this exact font but you could come up with a nice little picture, different font, different phrase, and you could, you know, it's, it's a niche worth exploring. One of my favorite shows of all time is this show called Suits, and it's on Netflix where I live, but it was on TV for years, and it features lawyers, and it's in like New York City, and it's, I just love, oh my God, I love the show so much. So anyway, one of the things is the main character, one of the main characters here, this guy, Mike Ross, he's got an apartment, and he's got some funky pictures up in his apartment. And so it's one of these things where when I see a TV show or a movie, and there's a cool looking poster, I will make a mental note of it, or I'll even take a picture of it, and then I'll use that as a springboard to look at the genre. So here's just a, you know, like a Japanese, you know, bamboo panda bear picture. Here's another one that I love. I actually made this one on another print on demand site. It wasn't Redbubble, but I made this on a sign. I made a sign actually for myself and for a friend of mine, and it says wet paint. And so it's got, um, it's got wet paint and it's got like a distressed background on it. And I just love the design. So I changed the font a tiny bit and I changed it to make it a portrait instead of a landscape. And you know, it's a pretty basic design. And you can go to a hardware store and buy a wet paint sign, but the idea is you're using it as art in your home, urban, you know, trendy Brooklyn kind of feel to it. And so, you know, you could make that sort of a design. The idea being because it's in the show, people are gonna like that design. Here's another one that I really like. I really love old vintage pictures. Again, this is all the same show. I love suits like crazy. But in this apartment, they've got a vintage typewriter picture set up. So what I noticed when I was watching it is I went, okay, old vintage typewriter picture, vintagey background paper, and it's like scuffed. It's distressed. Okay, I can run with that. Well, I go to a public domain website. I grab literally 200 vintage pictures, forks, knives, typewriters, scissors, wash basin, like it, the list is endless, right? And so you grab 200 public domain vintage images, you distress them, you stick them on a distressed background, and, or you just forget the background, just have it be distressed, put it up on Redbubble. Now you've gotten 200 ideas based on one picture and one TV show. And you know, it's sitting on a high-end TV show that people are looking at every day. So they're gonna go, huh, I wonder if there's something like that online. They type in vintage typewriter distressed, all of a sudden your Redbubble shop comes up. 
So I hope you guys found that helpful. Really quick video today. I just wanted to walk through different ways you can look through stuff in real life. Don't need to worry about Google. You don't need to watch the news all day long for hours at a time. But if you're watching a movie or a TV show, if you're out in public, you know, these are ideas where you can do real life niche marketing. Hope you guys found that helpful.